Episode 8. Hello, uh, this is Andre Davis, and about three years ago, I did a series of YouTube videos that focused on the following question. What are the things holding America back from the realization of successful, affluent African-American communities being the norm and not the exception? In this episode, we're going to talk about the future of the unemployables. But before we get started, if you're looking for a good book, Our Two Societies, multi-award winning book uh, that you're looking at on your screen, it's available everywhere, I recommend you pick it up. Um, What you're hearing is not the content of the book, but what inspired the creation of the book. And so here we go. We're going to start it off now. And the topic of the day is why realizing the consequences of buying the racism tinted glasses that race hustlers are selling is so detrimental to the African-American community and impeding the realization of my dream. I think it's time, it's a great time to quote Dr. Thomas Sorrell or Dr. Thomas Soil or Soul. S-O-W-E-L-L. Um, he's a world, if you don't know him, he's African-American, world-renowned um, economist. He has a Ph.D. in economics from the University of Chicago. Uh, go look him up. He's written about 30 books. Okay, I believe he said this, <laughs> or he, he was quoting someone else, but anyway... There has never been a group of people who have gone from poverty to affluence by means of politics. So with that in mind, what are we expecting from our politicians? Now, being black is not a skill set unless you're a race hustler. So why are we trying so hard and spending so much in human capital on trying to be black? It's in your detriment and to the race hustler's financial benefit, right? Instead of trying to be black, we need to start seriously competing in the marketplace. And to do this, we have to put racism in its proper context and raise our standards and expectations of each other. Now, simply doing that is a big step in the right direction away from a future filled with unemployable black Americans. Unemployable, not because of the intent of a racist or systematic racism, but because we will have less and less jobs available in a future full of automation, making marketable skills that much more valuable. Again, think of how much time and energy we African Americans put into trying to eliminate racism compared to our fellow Americans who don't. Instead, they invest precious human capital trying to come up with the next wealth generation application which will eliminate your job. Not as a black man, but as a man. Now, according to an article from Yahoo Financial Times, here's the link. Half of U.S. jobs could be taken by robots in the next 20 years. Here's an example. Loan loan officers have a 98% chance of being replaced by software. In fact, I'll provide another recent article about Ross, an artificially intelligent lawyer that has already been hired by one of the country's largest law firms. So, If you are currently 15 years old and you plan on having a career as a loan officer, I just took away your ability to cry racism when you you lose your job. Again, let's go back to black being a skill set. It's not. Being black won't protect you from the technology that will be replacing your job if you're a loan officer who happens to be black. So make sure you question the community, the community activist or the politician that blames your unemployment or your future unemployment on systematic racism. All right. In addition to that affirmation, it's time to move on beyond the mindset 
of trying to prove that blacks are equal and just start being equal because we are. I'll give an example of this. I was fortunate enough to see the great Dr. Cornell West uh, give a speech or to talk or be involved in a conversation. I can't remember now. It was like 1991. Um, but the, the panel there was a bunch of people from the University of Michigan. We were like in this hotel ballroom or whatnot. He was introdu- introduced. There's about 200 people in this room, um, all from either University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, whatever. He gets up and starts talking, and for about the for about the first five minutes, I was sitting in, sitting there like, okay, I know it's English he's speaking, but I don't understand any of this. And I looked around, and everybody else everybody else had the same expression, like, okay. And then he stopped, kind of chuckled a bit, and, and I'm paraphrasing. I just wanted to prove to y'all that I could flow. I got a great command on the English language. And everybody laughed and stuff. And Yeah, that's great. His command of the English, English langu- language is way better than mine, obviously. I can barely talk. Um, but it's just that mindset. That example reminds me of that mindset. Okay? I believe that this mindset holds the African-American community back from raising our standards and expectations of each other. If you are black, white, or Asian, you are forced to compete in the marketplace. And if you feel you have to prove that you are as intelligent as other participants, it puts you at a disadvantage because your competitors aren't wasting time trying to prove that you, that they are just as capable to compete. They are actually competing. All right? So another example. I remember when I was in law school thinking how awesome it was for me, a black kid from the projects making it to law school. But then you got to think about Malcolm Allen. Maybe you don't know about him, but he was a a lawyer. He became a lawyer in 1844. Now you talk about systematic racism and races. 1844, man. Enough said. He was an attorney. He wasn't born a slave. He was born free, but still he was, he became an attorney before he was even a U.S. citizen. He became an attorney 20, 20 years before the 13th Amendment. And I'm special because I went to law school in the year 2000. I mean, come on, man. That should be expected. Maybe not every black person should go to law school, but we got to raise our standards. You see a black guy going to law school, it ain't like he walking on the moon, Right? Um, let's put this subject to rest. We've had black astronauts, Supreme Court justices, CEOs, world-renowned scientists. Shout out to Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Dr. Sylvester Gates. We even have a black president. All right. So, and if you need facts on this subject, go check out, just Google Dr. Thomas Sorrell. Uh, S-O-W-L-L, pick one of his 30 books. Um, In one of those books, uh, he, in in numerous books, he alludes to IQ, IQ tests, and how they have nothing to do with race. It's all about culture. And one great book to read on this subject is called Black Rednecks and White Liberals. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Black and rednecks and white liberals. All right, till next time.